Uh, thank you, and um, come and see me in booth number seven. Obviously, 10 minutes isn't much, so hopefully this uh, gives you a bit of a, an idea of what we do. We're a publicly listed company on the ASX, so the typical disclo disclaimers um, that one would expect uh, with, with, uh, with that. But I'll start with our customer and the, and the industry that we work in. Um, we're in clinical microbiology. Best example is if you think you have a urinary tract infection, that urine specimen goes to a pathology lab. That lab could be within a hospital or it could be a private lab. Uh, that specimen gets, on, gets put onto an agar plate or a petri dish. You'll see a picture of that up on the screen. It then is incubated for a number of hours and following incubation, a scientist or a microbiologist sits at a workbench, takes the lid off, looks to see if anything's growing and the good news for, um, for, for most people who have a UTI is it's negative up to you know, 70, 80% of the time. Um, so all of that information is great, keyed into the, into the, um, into the lab system, uh, and that result goes back to the patient. Um, so the challenges with that is that you've got this highly trained resource. So this, this university qualified scientist who is sitting literally at a workbench reading plates. Most of these plates are negative, so a really poor utilisation of their, of their resources and, and their effort. The other interesting thing from a, a macroeconomic perspective is that there's not enough microbiologists coming through universities. At any one time in the US, 9% of microbiology jobs are vacant. So this is not an issue only in, in markets where there's general skill shortages, but this is in, in markets such as the US, we see it. I've, I've visited some accounts here in, in Singapore this week. Um, and in Australia and Germany and the like. So this is a, a, global, a global issue in terms of resources. So the key issues, efficiency of highly trained resources and a lack of qualified resources uh, in these areas. So our solution is developing a, a platform technology which automates that reading and the interpretation of colony growth on an agar plate. It's an artificial intelligence platform technology. It's a machine learning algorithm that we've trained and we have scientists who annotate thousands of images and we reach a specific sensitivity and specificity that we've conducted significant clinical trials to demonstrate that the technology works. We're not a startup organisation. We've been listed for around 12 years. We've been developing this technology for the last eight years. So we're not some um, little small startup AI company that's just getting into this space because it's a, it's a buzzword uh, in the industry. We have got FDA clearance on the core technology. From a customer perspective, they load up the input module with, with, the, with the plates. The plates move through an imaging station, which is in the middle of the instrument pictured on the screen. And then based on the designation of the algorithm, those negatives are automatically removed from the workflow and those positive results then still need to be reviewed by a scientist. So the key benefit to the customer is you only looking at the positives, you completely discard all of those negatives, and that's validated directly through your laboratory information management system. It'll process 200 plates an hour, so it's around three times faster than that of a human or a manual plate read. It is clinically proven. We've done a 10,000 patient clinical trial where we put 10,000 patient specimens through our APAS instrument. Um, APAS gave the result and then those same specimens were, were reviewed by three independent microbiologists and we looked to then correlate all of those results. It was that, on that basis that we submitted that information to the US FDA in, um, in uh, December of 2015 and received FDA clearance as part of a de novo application in October of 2016. This is an approved indication that we've led the way. We're the only technology that provides this level of automation. We've also installed uh, our first instrument and sold our first instrument into a laboratory in, uh, in Melbourne, in Australia. And um, we have a publication that was presented earlier this year. So not only have we got a scientific publication to demonstrate the technology works, we also have a publication from customers validating the clinical utility and efficiency in their lab. We are listed, as I mentioned, um, and we are appropriately capitalised. So uh, the company did raise $7.9 million earlier this year as part of a private placement. Um, and so we have cash in the bank and enough runway to really see us through this commercialisation phase until uh, 2020. Uh, a number of milestones the company has achieved this year is really focused around closing out the uh, development of the technology, but getting key reference sites 
uh, in place globally, publishing some of these papers and really generating uh, traction from a commercialisation perspective. Some of the strategic placements that we've been successful in. St Vincent's Hospital in Melbourne is the hospital who first had the instrument. They had a, a prototype instrument in 2017 and that's how they, they published their, their customer evaluation data. They've subsequently purchased the first instrument. We've got another strategic placement in Cologne, Germany. Labor Wispelinghoff is the single largest laboratory in Germany and one of the largest labs in all of Europe. And they're working with us on, it, on developing future analysis modules. And the third, we installed in, uh, in, in a lab in uh, Minneapolis a couple of weeks ago, and we now have a, a, have a key reference site in the United States. These are really important because as we move forward with a brand new technology, all the, all the new markets want local validation of the technology. They want to be able to go and visit a lab. And so establishing these strategic reference sites is really important um, with respect to our commercialization plans. The revenue model is uh, relatively straightforward. The costing of the instrument comprises a, 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 of a once-off capital purchase of 300,000 US dollars. Then there's an annual software license of 30,000 US dollars. So there is no other consumables that are associated with the instrument. We have a capital purchase and then we have an install-based software revenue, which is not a discretionary revenue or not a discretionary service. It's something that, that you are tie into. Uh, we will distribute this through global distributors in key markets uh, in the US and in Europe. And we've got a number of discussions happening at the moment with, uh, with a number of large-scale distributors. To give an idea, we're not putting forward forward-looking forecasts at this stage, but here's a couple of examples or case studies of similar technologies in the space that we operate. The first is the Previ Isola. This automates the inoculation and streaking of the specimen onto a plate. LBT, that was our founding product, and it was licensed and sold by B. Ameria for a period of five years between, or six years between 2009 and 2015. And over that five-year period, they were able to sell 500 instruments. Um, the second example is the Multitoff. There are a couple of manufacturers who, who provide this instrument and over a 10 year period, they were able to sell around 1500 globally. And so what we've done is then extracted based on the revenue opportunity that I outlined in that previous slide, what, what the revenue or market opportunity is in terms of penetration uh, over the coming five years or 10 years or, or how, however you wanna do your, your analysis. But this is a factual based example of similar products in the space. The competitor landscape is one where we really do stand alone. Um, there is competition with respect to automation, and this automates the end-to-end -end mechanical movement of plates from the start through to the finish. These two automation um, companies still do, do not have the ability to automate culture plate reading, so we still stand alone in this space. They're also very large, so two and a half million US dollars is kind of the ballpark of a starting cost. You need very specific plumbing and installation requirements for the physical space in a lab. And if anyone has gone to a, a laboratory or a hospital environment, um, lab space is always very much at a premium. So we're operating in a very different space. And in fact, where we identified the market opportunity many years ago, it was really in this modular footprint, lower cost, ease of installation. So really what we're doing is automating that highly skilled activity that requires a scientist. You can train a technician to put a specimen onto a plate, but you, you, you can't train the technician to uh, identify colony growth on an agar plate. Finally, our outlook. We're really on the cusp of generating traction in this early commercialization phase of the company. So we're really moving and transitioning from what's been a technology development and an invention company over the past six years into a, into a company that's really focused on getting traction in the market from a sales perspective. We expect to lodge our 510K for the automated instrument um, in the coming weeks, um, which is a really key milestone for us uh, ahead of FDA clearance for the US. So we'll have the only FDA cleared class two medical device with this approved indication for sale in the United States in 2019. We'll continue the work on the market development aspects. Continued publications will occur, will, uh, which are really important data points to, to prove the technology um, and expanding these global reference sites. And finally, from a sales acti activity perspective, 
We expect to continue more sales traction in our launch market of Australia early next year and convert some of the leads that we've been working on since April uh, into, into sales and expanding that into our other three key markets, which is Germany, the UK and the, and the US. So achieving modest sales through 2019 and being realistic with that um, too. And again, having the cash to be able to, to execute on our plans. Come see me in booth number seven. Thank you. Fantastic, thank you very much.